Now we're going to play a little game here. What percentage of championship rosters will have blank? Gene, I'm going to start with you. You get to give us a percentage. What percentage of fantasy championship rosters will have Cortland Sutton on them? What do you think? I would say probably around 6%. 6%. I think I think what what people are forgetting is that the teams that have a Cortland Sutton on them are probably teams that like had a big name dude that that fizzled out, <laughs> right? And so yeah, you may have been able to like stem the tie with Cortland Sutton, but are you actually is he is he putting you in a position to be able to be on a fantasy championship game? I don't know if that's the that's the case. I think more than likely, he's probably heavily involved in semifinal and quarterfinal rosters, but probably not championship rosters. He's been looking so good, though. Dwayne wrote him up as one of the potential alpha wide receiver ones the rest of the way. And let me just say, on pace to record a career-high target share at 25%. Uh, highly recommend checking out the uh, utilization report over there because we could be seeing alpha uh, Cortland Sutton here. Next up, what percentage, Pete, when we go to fantasy championship rosters, will have Justin Jefferson? Disappointing week 12, but what do you think here? I mean, it's... It's low, you know, if it, it's certainly lower than than Cortland Sutton because of opportunity cost, right? You know, mm -hmm. Cortland Sutton wasn't an early round pick, even if he wasn't doing much at the start of the season. But Justin Jefferson, you took him over Saquon Barkley. You took him over Derrick Henry. This is a guy who is not only not performing, but getting lapped by a lot of the other guys who went around him. He's getting lapped by the wide receivers who went around him, guys like Jamar Chase and CeeDee Lamb. So uh, I will say a very, very small amount. I'll, I'll say sub- one percent uh, of championship Dang. teams will have Justin Jefferson. I mean, because do you think this continues? Dwayne even wrote this up. I keep referencing the utilization report, but it has such great information in it. And he wrote up that the Vikings passing attack is winning more through diversity. We saw a huge Jordan Addison game. TJ Hawkinson is back. Like, do you see more spike games in Jefferson's future or not really? No, for sure. I mean, we were just talking about the matchups. You know, I think this spot against the Cardinals here at home is a really good spot for them. I, no one should be surprised when Justin Jefferson has a 35-point game, but it's going to be too little too late for teams to get to mm -hmm. the championship. Yeah, that's that's a good point there. All right, next up here, Gene, let's go. What percentage of fantasy championship rosters will have Jackson, Smith, and Jigba on them? No, I cannot believe that we're here. Gene, please be nice to JSN. What do you think? I think that there'll be, you know, it'll probably be a good amount. I'll say 12%. 12% okay. of, of fantasy championship rosters will have Jackson Smith and Jig on it. I think what, what's happened is, is that obviously you didn't, it wasn't like he was a first round pick. So you probably got another premium guy to go with him. And now that he is performing well, um, much better than he performed in the first half of the year, I think you see him being a, a weapon or almost a luxury on your on your roster somebody that you mm -hmm. may have to put down another really good receiver in order to be able to put into the you know put into the starting lineup which means that you have a really good roster so i think if you have jackson smith and jig you probably in those first eight weeks you probably went and started dealing looking for better options because he just wasn't producing enough and now that you have those better options on top of having Jackson Smith and Jigba, I think you're sitting in a really good place. So I'll, I'll give them 12%. Okay, I like that. No, I like that. And that's a tough division right now. You know that they're going to be playing till like that. It looks like that final game against the Rams is going to mean something for the Seattle Se Seahawks. So here's hoping there. Next up, Pete, what percentage of fantasy championship rosters will have Jalen Waddle on them? Someone that's been, again, another pretty big disappointment, but we saw him finally break out a little bit last week. What do you think? Yeah, honestly, this one is a little bit like the Sutton thing in that they did so little for you at the beginning of the season that they weren't helping you, and then they get put on the bench, right? Even Cortland Sutton, people don't forget, and sorry to circle back to that, but it's like he had the week seven game <laughs> against the Saints where he had zero points. People weren't starting him the following week when he then went off. Same with Jalen Waddle, right? So it takes some time to actually get these guys back in your circle of trust. Obviously, Waddle's in the circle of trust now, but he probably wasn't even played his first good game. He was played last week. Great. You got to win, but I don't think he is going to be a driver of you know teams to the fantasy championship uh obviously a nice piece if you are already treading water and he helps you get there but i'll say you know sub 10 percent uh, of teams mm -hmm. will be a, a waddle team 
Yeah, and we already talked about the Miami Dolphins, what they're going to look like the rest of the way. Some cold weather games, Jonu Smith. So definitely one that we hope you started him last week because that would have definitely helped your chances getting to the playoffs. All right, what percentage of fantasy roster, fantasy championship rosters here, Gene, will have Josh Jacobs on them? What do you think? I think a, a large percentage. I'm, I'm going to say somewhere around 28%, 28 to 30%. We're going to have Josh Jacobs and why because people were off the Josh Jacobs train like he wasn't being and and with everyone attacking wide receivers and going wide receivers so heavy in the first few rounds like you probably got Josh Jacobs in some in some you know later later upper tier rounds you know mid rounds like where he was able to come in and just start doing work and if you have him Plus, you have an elite level receiver or possibly even another elite level running back on your on your team, depending upon if you went hero back or if you went no backs like who who knows? Like, I think it's very possible that you have a guy like him matched up with another um, big, big number type of guy who both of them on any given week could almost single-handedly win you your fantasy day. So I think you'll see a large percentage of teams have Josh Jacobs in their lineup come championships because they didn't have to pay a premium to get him. And I will say, Josh Jacobs, when you're looking at ESPN uh, full point PPR scoring, he hasn't scored under 20 fantasy points. He's only done it once since week seven. So he's been on this tear even with Money. their bye week. He has been helping you. He has been so, so solid these last few weeks. So I like that one. Let's finish it off here, Pete. What percentage of fantasy championship rosters will have Kyron Williams on them? Yeah, I think this one will be higher in that, you know, Kyron, while he has struggled of late, he has still been a uh, really high floor, really nice consistency, had that incredible streak of scoring. And so the thing about Kyron is he isn't ruining your lineup, right? How your team does uh, probably comes down to your second round pick, your third, your fourth, your fifth round pick, because Kyron, I think, is doing his job. He's not, you know, a stone cold league winner, but he's not tanking your lineup. And so I think smart teams constructed around Kyron Williams can still succeed. And I think some better days are ahead for him, too. He's had some tough matchups of late Eagles run defense really good. So I'll, I'll say he's going to be on 30 uh, percent of, of championship okay. rosters. That's not bad. The rest of the way, they take on New Orleans, Buffalo, San Francisco, the Jets, Arizona Cardinals, and then Seattle Seahawks to finish off the season. So here is hoping that better days are ahead for Kyron Williams.